ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد my dear brothers and sisters in islam as we move forward in this series expounding upon the beauties of islam to talk about the first and perhaps the most profound beauty or quality of beauty that we can find in our faith i wanted to share some thoughts of my own share some of my own experience that i went through choosing islam to be my way of life and that starts at the recognition that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of everything as people of faith we recognize this to be an undeniable fact it is upon this belief that we build our faith that we base our way of life upon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the quran in surah al-baqarah verse number 29 he says هو الذي خلق لكم ما في الارض جميعا ثم استوى الى السماء فسواهن سبع سماوات وهو بكل شيء عليم in this verse allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying what is translated to mean he it is who created for you all that is on the earth it is allah that created for us everything that is in the earth then he rose above the heavens in a manner befitting his majesty and he made those heavens number in seven and he is the all-knower of everything brothers and sisters this belief or understanding that it is Allah that created all of existence it is not only something that is held in the heart of the faithful but it is something that those who disbelieve and deny and turn away from true faith they recognize and acknowledge this was something that was very common during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu and the pre-Islamic days of jahili or ignorance. In fact, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in the Quran, He says, in Surah Al-Zukhruf, in Ayah number 9, He says, وَلَئِن سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَيَقُولُنَّ خَلَقَهُنَّ الْعَزِيزُ الْعَلِيمُ Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in this verse, He says, and indeed, if you ask them, and here He's talking about those pagans of Mecca, if you were to ask them who has created the heavens and the earth, then surely they will say the mighty and all-knower created them. It was something that was even recognized and understood at that time, that it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that created everything. And until this very day, even in science, scientists throughout the ages, many of them have concluded that there is a creator. And as we know, many scientists, this is the debate that they get into. This is the internal problem that they themselves have, is how can we measure and believe in something that is unmeasurable? Many of the scientists, including names such as Albert Einstein, one of the great scientists of this era, who has affected our understanding of many things such as time, gravity, and the conversion of matter to energy. E equals MC squared. It's something that you learn in grade school. Albert Einstein, he said, or he thought that the concept of God, it is without a doubt the reality. Albert Einstein 
was of the opinion that this creation, it was not something that just happened or came into being. He recognized the impossibility of a non-created universe. That our universe had to have been created. A scientist, and the work of these scientists is quite amazing when you begin to look into it just on a very elementary level. Their understanding and their depth of knowing and awareness of this creation, how it works and operates. So they have come to the conclusion that there has to be a creator, or some of them had. And the reason for that is the simple design of this universe. The design of creation and the way that it works in harmony. The function and the operation of that. That everything was designed with due measure. It was designed with proper measure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in the Quran. A verse or verses that we hear oft repeated. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, سَبِّحِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ الْأَعْلَى أَلَّذِي خَلَقَ فَسَوَّى وَالَّذِي قَدَّرَ فَهَدَى Surah Al-A'la, verses number one through three, and Allah says, exalt the name of your Lord, the Most High, who has created everything and then proportioned it, who has measured and then guided. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse, or these verses, He says that He, Azza wa Jal, Al-A'la, the Most High, He created. Right, but in His creation, He didn't just throw things together haphazardly. He didn't just put this together and that together and slap this on and slap that on and hope for something to come out. But he created and he measured it. It was done calculated. Our creation and the creation of the entire universe. Everything from the most insignificant to the most monumental of things. Allah created it in proportion. He measured it with purpose, with design. It was done with design and then he says, Fahada, And then guided it guided it to its function, guided it to its purpose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this design, with this creation, with the proportion and all of that, you can see clearly that if there was proportion and if there was measure, there had to have been a reason behind all of that. When we look at ourselves and the way that we operate and function as human beings, when we make something, when we invent something, when we build something, when we construct something, we don't just begin with the construction and then figure out what we're building later, but we're always building or constructing something for a purpose, for a reason. We're designing and measuring things to fulfill a need, to serve a purpose in our lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has created all that exists with a purpose and an intent in mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Dukhan, verses number 38 and 39, wal -arda wa ma huma la We have not created the heavens and the earth and all that is between them for mere play or out of play. It was not done for amusement. It was not done just for entertainment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, says, وَمَا خَلَقْنَاهُمَا إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ he says, we created them not except with truth, but most of them do not recognize or know this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything for a specific purpose, for a reason, for a true cause. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has known this purpose. The purpose of existence, the purpose of creation, Allah azza wa has known this for eternity. Our purpose and the purpose of our environment and all, that thing, all the things that are around us, that purpose was known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it was exhibited by Allah azza wa jal and recorded so that we could understand that this purpose was acknowledged. It was known. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in authentic narration found in Sahih Muslim on, Ab, on Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-Asr radiyallahu anhum, qala sami'atu rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, katab allahu maqadir al-khala'iq. In this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that he was heard to have said by his companion that Allah Azza wa Jal, he wrote and recorded the decree of all of the creation 50,000 years before he created. The decree, the measure, the purpose, the goal all of that was recorded. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has known it forever. But then he recorded it. 
50,000 years before he began that creation. Brothers and sisters, over time, we as human beings, we have on our own been able to discover the purpose of many things just through trial and error. We have been able to uncover the purpose of many things in our life. And we have been able to see that the best results are achieved if those things are left in their natural state and or used for the purpose in which they were designed. That if we leave those creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their natural state as they have been created by the best of creations, Ahsan al Khaliqeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of creators. If we leave it in their natural state and or use it in the intended manner, then we will have the best results. And there's a couple of examples that I want to share with you. Examples that will all ring very true for you. Something that we, I should say two things that we cannot go without, eating and sleeping. The design of those things, the purpose of those things, we all love to eat, right? Many of us plan our days around our meal times. We get excited when it's time to eat. Our family sometimes comes together, and certainly here our community comes together when there's food involved, right? It brings us joy, and it sustains our life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in fact, He has provided for us what we eat, and He has commanded us to eat of the lawful good things. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kulu min tayyibati ma razaqanakum. وَاشْكُرُوا لِلَّهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ Allah just says in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 172, O oh, you who believe, eat from the food, the good food, the good things that we have provided for you and be grateful to Allah, if indeed it is He that you worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to eat good food, right? And He has provided in a very natural way, in a very organic manner, that which will sustain our lives if we use it for its purpose. If we leave it in that natural state, we'll find that for the most part, the purpose will be served and it will be, it will be served well. If we begin to change, if we begin to play with, if we begin to add on, we will find that removing something from its natural state can lead to harmful effects. Dichlorophenol. I don't know if you've heard of this before. Dichlorophenol is a chemical that is used commonly in pesticides and to chlorinate water, right? This is something that we have started to add to our sustenance, our food and our drink. Dichlorophenol, a chemical, according to a new study in the December issue of the Annals of Allergy, Asthma and Immunology, which is the scientific journal of the American College of Allergy, Asthma and Immunology, dichlorophenol containing pesticides could be partially to blame for the rise in food allergies. Food allergies, the sustenance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided, we are finding ourselves unable to consume it. We are unable to consume it. Food allergies, brothers and sisters, affect 15, 15 million Americans. And the effects of that range from a slight allergic to reaction to possible death. And if you are suffering from food allergies or you have a child that suffers from food allergies, you know how serious this effect is. Doctors say that you should not leave home without the medicine to take care of an allergic reaction, an EpiPen. There are children today that if they eat a, a small portion of a peanut, they could go into shock and die. And they have to carry this pen with them so that they can prevent their death based on this allergic reaction, right? Dichlorophenol. We began to tamper with the natural state and this has attributed to the rise in food allergies and the hardship that we are facing as human beings. This is very stressful and I know a couple of our community members here have informed me that they have gone through this with their children or themselves and how stressful it is to deal with this. You can't eat like the normal person eats, right? It affects the entire family unit. When it's time to come for meal times, you have to be very particular. You have to be very careful in what you cook and what you prepare, how you do it. Here you can see the lead study author says, our research shows that high levels of this chemical, which is found in pesticides, can possibly weaken food tolerance in some people causing these food allergies. This is one example. Another example is in our sleep pattern. Our sleep pattern. 
right? This is something that we're required to do naturally. We have to sleep, right? If we challenged ourselves to stay up, and some of us have done this, if you're ever in college or have gone for examinations, you know that you can push yourself so far without sleep. Over, you can do a, overnighters and stay awake for a day or two and function to some degree. But if you go beyond that, it begins to break down and your body will shut down and you will sleep whether you want to or not. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in this manner and he has put us in a natural rhythm of sleep times and awake times. Allah says in the Quran in Surah An-Naba, verses number 9 through 11, وَجَعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ subata, وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ libasa, وَجَعَلْنَا النَّهَارَ مَعَاشًا in these verses, Allah says, and made, for, or, or, and made your sleep as a means of rest, and made the night as clothing, and have made the day for livelihood. Look at this, right? And you can see from the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions, that he would tell them, if you have nothing pressing or no need, that after Salat al-Isha, you should go to sleep. You should go to sleep. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala has, the made, has made the night a time of rest a covering for us and he has made the day a time for us to be awake and to go to work and to pray and to fast and all of these things are alive our waking moments in our life they are to be done in the daytime they are to be done in the daytime right? and this is something that scientists have called circadian rhythm a circadian rhythm that the human being naturally operates and functions in a manner that is rhythmic and he is affected by daylight and darkness. That these are triggers that send signals to the body that it's time to be awake or it's time to be asleep. And what happens when you turn the clock upside down, when you flip that over? When you begin to tamper with the natural way in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us? Many of us have done this. Some of us are doing this now when we have to go to work at night. Right, we have the night shift. And this is something relatively new for the human race is that we are no longer sleeping at night, but we are operating on a 24-hour basis. This is an industrialized way of living. To have job, to have work, to have productivity during the sleeping hours, the natural sleeping hours of the human being. And when you do this, this is something, that, an effect that takes place called circadian misalignment. It's when you misalign your natural rhythm. It's quite, it seems, I guess quite insignificant right we've done this from time to time or we stay up late we're on the computer we're watching TV we're talking with our friends we're chatting we're having a party we don't realize the effects of this if it's done long term according to a number of research publications the Journal of Clinical Hypertension the American Journal of Cancer the New England Journal of Medicine they have concluded that when we disrupt the natural rhythm we could face grave consequences and these include hypertension diabetes obesity cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, and even some forms of cancer. Right, when we begin to tamper with the natural way, the natural way in which we've been created, our creation, we find that the results are not pleasant. For that reason, we find today there's a very aggressive movement towards all natural and organic. Right, you can't go into a grocery store now today and not find an organic alternative. Right, to what we as human beings created in the early 1900s with pesticides and chemicals and productivity in the, in the food market. And there's been a number of documentaries that cover this topic to alter the nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sustenance. Right? We find that not only people are saying, both in the medical field and science, but the common person is saying that living a more natural life and consuming more natural products it is better for your well-being, right? Some things are best left in the manner which they were created and used for their design purpose. Some things are best left in the manner in which they were created by Allah the natural manner in which we find them, and then they are used for the purpose which they were designed. Brothers and sisters, we are also creatures of Allah. We were also created with proportion. We were created with due measure. And we were sent and made for a specific purpose. This concept for many has been left unanswered or improperly addressed. 
leaving many to wander in the darkness, not knowing why they are here or what they should be doing. We have been created like all of the other creation with a natural disposition. A natural disposition, and this was highlighted by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Sahih al-Bukhari. On the authority of Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, qal al Nabiyu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, kullu mawludin yuladu ala al-fitrah. Every child, every newborn, is born upon a natural disposition, a natural inclination, a natural way. And it is his parents that make him a Christian, that make him a Jew, a Christian, or a fire worshiper, or anything else beyond that. It's either the parents or the society or some outside influence that changes that natural disposition upon which we were made, upon which Allah created us. So here there's some hard wiring going on, some pre-programming, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights that in further detail in the Quran in Surah Al-A'raf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمْ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَا شَهِدْنَا أَنْ تَقُولُوا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَ إِنَّا كُنَّا عَنْ هَذَا غَافِلِينَ أَوْ تَقُولُوا إِنَّمَا أَشْرَكَ آبَاؤُنَا مِنْ قَبَلْ وَكُنَّا ذُرِّيَّةً مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ أَفَتُهْلِكُنَا بِمَا فَعَلَ الْمُبْطِلُونَ In this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what's translated to mean And remember when your Lord extracted from the loins of Adam's children and their descendants and made them testify saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Am I not your Lord? Am I not your Lord? And they all said, Bala shahidna. Indeed, we bear witness. We bear witness. When you look at this, this is all inclusive. This is for every human being. Each and every one of us, whether we remember this or not, whether we acknowledge this or not, whether we bear this to be truth or not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Creator, our Maker, before He created us, He took each and every one of us from the loins of Adam, our father, the first man. He extracted us and put us on a plane, a vast plane, and He made us testify, saying, Am I not your Lord? And each one of us said, Bala shahidna. Indeed, we testify. We have already testified to faith. We have already been given our purpose. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us. And He did that for a reason, as He says in the Quran. That was in case you say on the Day of Judgment, we were unaware of this. Or you say it was our ancestors who worshipped others besides Allah. And we are only their descendants. Will you then destroy us for what the liars did? أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. بسم الله والحمد لله حمد كثير طيبا مباركا في كما يحب ربنا ويرضى ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد. Brothers and sisters, as the rest of creation, we have been created in a specific manner. We have been created in a specific manner, unlike the rest of the creatures. Right? When you look at the creation, you see such variety. It's amazing. And it's a testament to the power and might of Allah. And for each of His creatures, the design was made to fulfill the purpose in which they were created. Right? We don't use water to build homes. Right? We don't take sand and dirt to drink. Allah has created them very specifically with a purpose. And we have recognized that very simple and elementary purpose for many things. Similarly, ourselves, we have been designed. And the natural manner in which we have been created is to recognize and acknowledge our Creator. As we have been pre-programmed and hardwired to do so. It is in our very being, the core of our souls. And for that reason, over time, as I said before, many of us have discovered these things without divine guidance. Some scientists and psychologists today are talking about this very thing. 
saying that the human being to address all of the needs in their life, not just the physical and the mental, but also the spiritual are in need of faith. These are not believers. These are not faithful people. These are scientists and psychologists. They say that the human being needs faith. They need religion to address all of their life, a holistic approach to living. This is the soul's need to connect to its Lord and Maker. This is what leads us to our purpose, to understanding our purpose. When we understand the nature in which we were created, we will understand the purpose of our life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا ليعبدون. I have not created the jinn and mankind except for my worship. This is our purpose. The primary purpose, the reason for our creation, the reason for our design, our arms, our legs, our ears, our sight, our mouths, and all that is between that, the reason for that, it was to worship Allah. That is our primary purpose. That is our target. That is why we were created. And some of the scholars go to the extent to say, that is why all of the creation was brought into existence. It was for the worship of Allah Brothers and sisters, our creation and everything about it was designed to fulfill its purpose. To live a life in obedience to our maker. It is to live a submissive life to Allah Azawajal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in Surah Al-An'am verse 162, قُلْ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ he says to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, say, say, indeed, my prayer, my sacrifice, my living and my dying are for Allah, the Lord of the worlds, who has no partner. This is what I have been commanded to do. This is what I have been ordered to do. This is the purpose in which I was to fulfill in my life. And I am the first of those who submit the first of the Muslims. Brothers and sisters, Islam, it is the natural choice of faith. It is the faith which is in agreement with our natural disposition. A faith which shows us, highlights for us, and aids us in achieving the purpose of our existence. And by doing so, we will find the best results. Leaving those things in a natural way and using them for their intended purpose, we will find the best of results. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدًا فَمَنِ اتَّبَعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا يُضِلُّ وَلَا يَشْقَى Allah says in Surah Taha, verse number 123, And if there should come to you guidance from me, then whoever follows my guidance will never go astray in this world, nor will they suffer in the hereafter. They will not go astray. They will not lose their way. They will not be disempowered to know why they are here. Before Islam, as a non-Muslim, this was the one question on my mind, weighing the heaviest, was why am I here? And this is the question that many people are dealing with today, Muslim and non-Muslim alike. Why am I here? What is the point? What is the purpose? If you follow the guidance, listen, the creations around us, the things that we use on a day-to-day -day basis, when we first get them, we, the one that did not make it or manufacture it, may not totally understand its purpose and its design. So what do we do? We look for the instruction manual. We are ready to take advice from the manufacturer of that thing. When you first bought your, the first computer or the first smartphone or perhaps even the first car that you drove, you needed instruction. You didn't just simply take it on yourself to figure it out. It would have been detrimental. Right? You were ready and willing to take instruction from the manufacturer, the maker, the those that knew about that thing. And you read it perhaps cover to cover or at least enough to know how to get along with it. The same thing goes for our souls, brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدَىٰ And if there is guidance that comes from me, if you take it, you will not be led astray and you will not suffer in the next life. When we begin to alter this, when we get to change this, right? Just like the food and our sleep pattern and everything else that we as human beings 
have taken to our own hands the responsibility of changing and manipulating, some of it good, some of it bad, when we begin to manipulate and alter the purpose of the human being and the nature of our creation, we find only difficulty and hardship, sorrow and sadness, stress and anxiety, fear and worry. That is what surrounds our lives. We live in that sickness because we have turned away from our true purpose, the intent in which Allah created us. Allah Azza wa says, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَا وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى in this verse, which is the next verse in Surah Taha, 124, and whoever turns away from my remembrance, indeed, he will have a depressed life. Ma'isha tambunka. He will have a restricted, constricted, hard life. That doesn't necessarily mean that they will be poor and in poverty and sick and all. No. They will be constantly worried, constantly upset, constantly depressed. They have no perspective in their life. They do not know where they're going. The richest of rich, the most powerful of the powerful, many of them you find, they are lost. They have what would seem to be a nice, easy life, an easy existence. But deep down in their hearts, they are struggling and depressed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى And on the day of resurrection, we will bring them up blind. We will resurrect them blind. As in this world, they did not use their basira. They did not use their insight and intellect to follow the guidance of Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise them without basar, with no sight. He will raise them with no sight. Brothers and sisters, for the best results of the soul, the soul, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is best left in the manner which it was created and used for the purpose that it was designed for and intended by Allah azza wa jalla. This is one of the beautiful qualities of Islam, our faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not left us to our own devices to discover the purpose of our creation, but has guided us to live in a very natural way in fulfillment of our purpose as human beings. So I hope this is a reminder for each and every one of you. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan wa razuqna attiba'a wa arina al-baatila baatila wa razuqna ajtinaaba Allahumma maqallib al-qaloob thabbir qaloobna ala deenak wa zidna khayran ya rabb al-alameen اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة